Hey everybody, what is going on? It is Crypto Bobby. Hope you are having uh, as good of a day as you possibly can because your portfolio, uh, if you have any money in crypto whatsoever, you're getting whomped right now. Uh, you're getting crushed. It's pretty much no safe place. There is no place to run. There is no place to hide unless you sold back into the dollar, into the euro, into tether, whatever the heck you sold into. But uh, it has been the past 24 hours Specifically, like the past 12, 14 hours or so have just been a straight fall through the floor on crypto. So I want to talk about kind of what's going on, my mindset right now, maybe what mindset you could potentially adopt or how you might be able to think about different things. So let's hop into it today. And as as far as things go, I'm going to pull up on chain FX here for those watching on the video, for those watching on the podcast. Uh, unfortunately, you can't see it, but we'll hop into it. So on chain FX right now, it is red, 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 red. There is not one crypto right now in green. It's just a matter of how red that crypto is gone. Um, we have, so starting at the top, the best performing crypto right now on on chain FX is Komodo and it's down 25%. That is the best performing crypto in the past 24 hours. So <laughs> you take that with a grain of salt. Uh, outside of that, Bitcoin is probably the holding, holding the best. Down about twenty six percent, you know, down a, down a, down a slight bit, about down about twenty six percent, and then in the worst case scenario, you have Tron down about fifty four percent, Einsteinium down fifty percent, Civic down forty seven, Zcash, oh, my poor Zcash was up to like seven hundred dollars yesterday, and that was down forty seven percent, R.I.P. Zcash, uh, OMG getting crushed was up to twenty something dollars a couple days ago, now it's down to below ten, so pretty much across the board. Crypto is getting slammed. We were at over a $600 billion market cap the other day, down to about $400 billion right now. It is not, not a great day in the crypto world. And depending upon where you got in, I think that really determines your overall thoughts, mindset, and what you might be thinking. And a lot of times, so I've always said in the you know crypto happy hours and a lot of my other videos, I always say, conservatively speaking, dollar cost averaging your way into crypto. When everybody always says, hey, I got a thousand bucks, got 500 bucks, got 10 grand. I want to throw it all into crypto. Let me do it. Let me do it. I want to, I want to throw my money into crypto. And, um, you know, especially as we were getting higher and higher, I was like, put some money in now, save some money in the back pocket for later. And then everybody comes out and yells at me and they're like, what, just put it all in, put it all in. What, why would you dollar cost average? This is why you dollar cost average. Does it not always work sometimes? Does crypto go up and up a lot of times? Yeah. But there are days when crypto goes down 50%. And if you are brand new to crypto, which you might be, and you put in your money at above $15,000 and you're seeing Bitcoin right now at less than 12 grand, you're probably freaking out quite a bit. You're probably petrified, especially if you put all of your investable money in. Now, if you only put 50% in, you might be thinking to yourself, okay, that's not that bad. I put 15% in, that's 15, 16, 17 grand, but now I'm getting a little bit of a discount and I'm able to dollar cost average my way in. That is one of the big reasons that I mentioned to dollar cost average. And it goes back to a tweet from the other day that I think is fairly helpful that Ryan Selkis tweeted it um, and I completely agreed with it. And this was about a week ago. And he said, if you're brand new to crypto, do three things. Don't invest more than 10% of your savings. That 10% of your savings a couple days ago is now worth about, uh, you know, 5% of your savings. But uh, don't invest more than 10% of your savings. Research first for the love of God. Absolutely recommend that. And then average in over the next 6 to 12 months versus all at once. I really agree with all three of those things. And I think that, um, you know, I think that it is, it's hard. But uh, yeah, you see a lot of people saying uh, FOMOing in right now, jumping in, jumping in. Um, you know, I made X amount of money in the past couple of days. And now that money's all gone, probably. You know, those those are paper gains unless you take those profits. So something to something to definitely consider. And as you go, you know, as we go through this process to as crypto dips right now, there's a couple different things that you want to look at. Depending upon where you got in, you got to zoom out a little bit. We'll zoom back out three months. I mean, granted, this is a real real hard sell off. But like I talked about last night, I mean, this has pretty much been a straight move to the sky for Bitcoin and a lot of other cryptocurrencies have followed, if not even exceeded that run. But you zoom out back three months ago in uh, like mid-September, Bitcoin was less than $4,000 in mid-September. And we went all the way up to tw close to $20,000, just pushed up to $20,000 and have sold off basically 
excessively since then. So you look at a, a 5X move from four grand all the way up to $20,000. And if you didn't think that there was a somewhat of a correction coming, you had to be a little bit, you know, you had to be a little bit blind. There were a lot of people talking about different plans you could do. You could do stop loss order. You know, you could do stop limit orders. You could, um, a lot of different kind of protection plans in terms of leaving some of the money on the exchanges and having it ready to go, um, you know, when you're ready to sell. So I personally, as far as things go, I haven't sold anything. Um, just going to throw that out there as well. I haven't sold anything. I probably should have. That probably would have been the better move to sell. Uh, you know, everybody likes to wear the old like HODL t-shirts. Everybody likes to po post the HODL memes, hold, 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 whatever, whatever. Um, but then when the market starts dropping, you get to see, you know, who's really got the stones. And if it's something where you're actually going to continue to hold or you're just way too freaked out, you don't like the concept of, of losing your money on paper. And trust me, you know, I'm sure a lot of people out there in a similar boat down five, six figures, one figures, whatever. I mean, there you could be down a couple hundred bucks and that could be a huge deal for you financially. So I don't want to, you know, I don't want to sit there and judge anybody, but crypto is highly volatile and it's always going to be, I mean, for the most part, it's going to be highly volatile for, for the near term. And it's one of the big reasons, in my opinion, why it's enjoyable. But, um, you know, you can't sit there quoting Warren, uh, Warren Golden Corral buffet and say, you know, all these, <laughs> all these kind of little, uh, little sayings of, uh, the whole, you know, buy low, sell high, be, be greedy when others are fear, or, you know, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful, all that kind of crap. Um, you can't quote the man Buffett. And then the second you lose 10% of your investment or 20% of your investment, especially in crypto, which is like 5% of a normal stock. Um, you can't just freak out and start selling and all that stuff. So, um, I mean, you can do whatever you want, quite frankly, but it is, it's definitely something that I'm looking at right now. And, to be pretty frank, like I said, I haven't sold anything. I'm dollar cost averaging in right now, as I always do. Um, I wish I was dollar cost averaging in harder, but uh, fundamentally, nothing has changed with Bitcoin. Fundamentally, nothing is different than it was um, 24 hours ago. Yes, was Bitcoin probably overbought? Was the cryptocurrency market probably overbought? Absolutely. Did the util or has the the valuation of crypto? outstripped the utility or outpaced the utility of crypto assets? Absolutely. But it doesn't mean that, uh, you know, you have to really panic. And a lot of it too, I mean, in my opinion, it comes down to where you got in. So for somebody like, you know, for somebody like myself, who's been in well below four, three, 2000 bucks, um, in some cases under a thousand bucks, it doesn't hurt as bad. If you got in at 17, 18, 19 grand, this is probably like getting punched in the face repetitively by Mike Tyson. So it's probably not the most enjoyable experience for you. And I definitely understand that. Uh, but it's always a learning experience too. So this is something where you learn from it. You see how you're feeling right now and you try and figure it out. And you try to get a feel for kind of what's going on, how you're feeling, um, and tr don't try to make emotional or rash, rash decisions. Always have a plan in place. Um, hopefully, you did have a plan in place for when something like this did happen. I personally did have a plan in place. It was called just huddle. Um, probably stupid. There are probably a lot better traders out there than than I am, but I'm a pretty normal dude um, who just kind of looks at this big long term picture. And um, yeah, that's kind of the way I've been approaching it today. But a couple other things that I did want to mention too, just outside of obviously this bloody market right now. So um, one thing that I thought is interesting and who knows what's going to happen with it. But um, we talked about it the other day, Charlie Lee selling all of his Litecoin. I think with this crash and this is Charlie can do whatever, you know, whatever he wants with his money, however he wants to do with his money, but um, probably not the best look on the planet that... He sold all his Litecoin and then like within 24 hours, the market just dropped out from under him or dropped out from under everybody else. And granted, I I would doubt there is a significantly heavy correlation there, but I just think overall looking at it, it looks like, you know, if I, I am a fan of Charlie Lee, so I'm going to preface it with that. I'm a fan of Charlie Lee. I like Charlie Lee. I'm definitely not accusing him of anything. And that is absolutely not the intention here. But if you're an outsider and if you look at this, or if you're just anybody and you look at this and you say, okay, the founder of Litecoin, like I'm getting texts from my friends that are like, yo, didn't the founder of like Bitcoin or somebody like sell all the shares? So like people that are on the outside, there's all these like misinformation, but the optics of it, how it looks not great to see, you know, the basically Charlie selling all of his Litecoin and then 
the market within 24, 48 hours just dropping through the roof. And it's not that Charlie caused that. It's the the optic, the negative optics there, or is that he knew something was coming. You know, either he knew the market was overbought or he knew something bad was going to happen or whatever. Um, but that's not uh, that's not always the greatest thing on the planet, I don't think. And I think optics-wise, it's probably going to get some pushback, especially if these things dip lower. But Mike Novogratz, when had this was the tweet that he had that I kind of quoted, but yeah, it's um, you know, it doesn't have uh, there's there's some people saying whatever. So when insiders sell, it's always important. I do think it's important. And then somebody who has Litecoin in their Twitter handle, obviously a Litecoin fan, but um, you're know, saying it's a ridiculous comment. The drop has nothing to do with um, you know with Charlie Lee, and the drop definitely doesn't. I don't think the drop has anything to do with Charlie Lee. It's at least optics wise, it's that like he might have known something was coming. Maybe who knows? But um, I'm and again, I'm gonna preface this and like don't come out and yell at me and say like you hate Charlie Lee and you're a fudder and all this stuff. Like I like Charlie Lee. I like Litecoin. Um, so I think just optics wise, it's something that like people might come out and they might have like press about it and all this crap. Um, so it's uh, hopefully hopefully there's there's nothing bad there because um, I don't think in a lot of respects Charlie deserves any of that. I'm just saying optics wise, probably not always the best look. So. Moving forward, what goes on? What can you do? How can you approach things? Um, I mean, for me, like I said, it's a, it's an opportunity to dollar cost average in on a continual basis, especially if you're if you're really confident in this stuff. It comes down to the fact that are you really truly confident in Bitcoin, in cryptocurrencies, and crypto assets? Do you really think that that was the top twenty thousand dollars is the highest Bitcoin is ever going to go, or do you believe the all these other guys on on Wall Street, you got McAfee and all these people saying, oh, it's going to 25 grand, it's going to 100 grand, it's going to 300 grand. Do you fall in that category or do you think this was something silly that I just wanted to hop on the train and make a quick buck and we'll go from there? So uh, depending upon where you are, if you really don't, if you really believe that Bitcoin does have true value, that these crypto assets do have true value uh, and yesterday or two days ago or whatever wasn't the all-time high, then if you buy now, you're buying in at a discount. You're buying in at a pretty steep discount too. I mean, you're basically buying at $8,000 discount on Bitcoin right now. If you really believe that yesterday in your heart of hearts, in your, your gut, you think, okay, this is fundamentally, there's nothing has changed here. Maybe it was a little bit overbought, but we'll see that all-time high again in the future. So that's something that I think um, you know, if you really are confident, put your money where your mouth is. If not, you know, if you were just kind of hopping on board for the time being to um, to see if you could ride that wave, and you really don't know if Bitcoin is here to stay, if you don't know if these crypto assets are here to stay, if Litecoin, if Ripple, if Bitcoin Cash, if Ethereum, if you don't think they're here to stay, then that's fine as well. But um, you have to. I think there's, you know, from a from a dollar cost averaging perspective, it's important to to look at that and see if you can kind of take that down a little bit, depending upon where, you know, depending upon where you've been. Um, so I'm excited. I'm not excited about this loss, but if you zoom out to your portfolio, like two weeks ago, depending upon where you got in, but if you had a portfolio two weeks ago and you zoom out to that, you're probably just about where you were right now. So things aren't that, that crazy. I mean, we basically retrace to December 6th, December 7th. So I'm all right. I'm alive. I hope you guys are doing well when it comes down to it. Uh, you know, really when it comes down to it in crypto, I said this on, I said this on Twitter the other day as well, but, um, you know, hopefully with everything, with, all, with all else being said, the sun will rise. You'll have a roof over your head unless you took out a second, third, fourth mortgage to buy Bitcoin. You'll be fine. You'll be good. It'll be all right. So keep that in mind. If you are really freaking out, if you're getting nervous, if you are just being super tempted to, to sell, to trade, to do whatever, um, try to remove that temptation. Either put something in a hardware wallet that's really difficult to reach, um, you know, do whatever. But for the most part, um, try to keep your head on straight. Try not to freak out. And if you got if you got the stones, if you really do believe in buy the dip and, and hodl and do that, if not, Go with whatever strategy works for you. But that's what I'm doing right now. I'm holding. I'm buying the dip. I'm continuing to accumulate. And I'm going to see what happens. Crypto is my moonshot. Crypto is not. Or crypto assets. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano. They are my moonshot. Um, you know, when something goes up 10x, 
when you have something like Cardano go from three cents to 50 cents, when you have something like Bitcoin go from $3,000 to $20,000, everybody loves it on the way up. But once it pulls back a little bit, everybody freaks out a little bit. You got to take the good with the bad. You got to take the bad with the good. So um, I'm living. I'm all right. Hopefully this video helped. Maybe you calm down a little bit if you're freaking out. Depending upon where you got in again, that probably dictates quite a bit of what you're feeling right now. But hopefully you're all right. Um, if you are new to the channel, by any chance, I do daily videos on the subject of crypto as well as YouTube Live Crypto Happy Hour. So hit the subscribe button, the notify bell for that. Uh, we'd love to hear what you guys are thinking, what you guys are feeling. So hit me up in the comments below. Thank you so much for your time. Crypto Bobby signing out. Peace.